What's up? So the big news of the week is that Twitter's API is no longer free. Let's talk about that. So it's in the news headlines where um, Twitter will charge developers to access its API starting February 9th. That is a week from now. And it will offer a paid basic tier. And they haven't yet said how much it costs. Hmm, that all of this is a little bit sus. And its implications for the internet are pretty large. Uh, I want to talk to you about that a little bit in this video and then get your thoughts, okay? But first, let's try and speculate a little bit. How much is this going to cost? If we look at Twitter's uh, pricing page, um, this is still while they have a free tier. The sandbox plan costs nothing per month, but the premium plan comes with all of these features and costs um, up to 500 requests a month, $150 a month, etc. So they charge you by requests to their API. I want to talk to you about what their API is and what it allows, and then kind of talk through some of the implications of this decision. Um, if you're not like in tech, what an API is from Twitter or any platform is when they allow like external apps and services to interact with their platform. In the case of the Twitter API, what it allows is like Lee Rob's uh, website, Lee Rob, you know, from Vercel. Um, if you scroll on his blog, boom, embedded tweet. This comes from the Twitter API. Uh, it's right there. Or, you know, the websites like React India, you're like, wow, nice website, awesome. Um, and then you scroll a little bit and you see um, familiar faces. Look, oof, uh, I know this guy. <laughs> anyway, um, this comes from the Twitter API. Um, or, you know, in, in your tech blogs that you read in Dev2, you just scroll and at some point you'll see an embedded tweet, right? That's what the API allows. It, it allows embedding Twitter in other places. Among other things, it also allows like social login, where you have login with Google, login with something, login with Twitter. Where Twitter is and where its API is, is in vast places across the web. And so to say, hey, this is no longer free pay up, um, puts people in a very precarious position. It changes things. Um, it changes things in, in many ways. Because in the past, when it was free, it I feel like it was devalued. And so when it's free, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to connect to Twitter's API and build this, and I'm going to build that. And there's, you can probably imagine how many sandbox projects were created, just playgrounds. Oh, I'm going to experiment. I'm going to experiment. And so you have like millions and millions and millions of apps um, consuming the Twitter API. Some of them are like production apps, like I just showed you, like Lee Rob's website, like Dev2, like React India. Many of them are probably people playing and learning and testing. Um, and then, of course, there's a free tier, so why not, right? The problem is it's not actually free to everybody. There is a cost. And if it's free to you, it probably means Twitter is bearing that cost, assuming you're doing small use cases. At some point, your use case grows. At some point, you build applications that, that oh, no, people are using my thing now. Still, you're piggybacking off of Twitter's servers for free. Um, this opens up the door to really quote unquote abuse where you're just like using their thing for free. Now they could and do have like rate limits and things to protect their systems. But what it seems like from this move is that there's just way too many things using it for free. And they're trying to use money as a means of crowd control. When you make people pay for things, the ones who really need it will pay. The ones who kind of sort of, I don't know, maybe I can do without it will not. Um, and I, I suspect that's what's happening here. Um, what that means is it benefits Twitter in two ways, right? It benefits Twitter by having a lot of people just not use their systems uh, from their API. And so that way they just get less usage, therefore less bills. But also um, it benefits them in another way, and that is people pay them. So there's, there, on the one hand, they're not like hemorrhaging money, paying all these server costs from all these consumer apps. Um, and on the other hand, they're getting money from the ones who probably have money to pay for it and who really, really need it. And I think that's why financially, I can kind of see where they're coming from. I feel like though, the big problem here is that while it benefits Twitter, it can hurt a lot of companies and developers because it's just sprung on them. Like, like you have a week to either pay or leave. Good luck. And if you've worked in a big tech company, um, for example, your you know your Spotify, your Netflix, whatever, um, they don't they probably don't use Twitter. I don't know. But if if it's a big company that uses Twitter, you know that things don't happen so fast in big companies. You have to have meetings and discussions and plans and security and audits and uh, and so um, I feel like it can hurt the companies in this way. Um, either they drop Twitter or they start paying. But then if you start paying, uh-oh, surprise bills. We've already forecasted. We've already done the finances. And so I feel like this is going to hurt companies. I feel like it might hurt 
people like you and me just people users connoisseurs of the web as well um because what's going to happen is i suspect what can happen is that companies then offload the cost to us um either by ads or by actually saying like listen if you want to read like business insider pay uh, we might see more paywalls and things on publications that embed tweets we might see more like paid features in general because the costs are going up and so then what was once a free web that we all enjoyed browsing now has more like money changing hands which then you know what maybe it would make us think oh maybe i just don't use this then or i'm hoping the positive alternative is that it shows us just how entitled we can be and helps us recognize value where value is and what i mean by that is um you know if twitter starts if, if companies start charging the twitter fees to us and we're like oh my gosh i can't believe i have to pay for this um i'm hoping that it opens our eyes it opens my eyes to the fact that we have so much good awesome enriching stuff that's for free that we just take for granted like think of open source uh open source being react astro what have you just free until it becomes unsustainable for the open source maintainer because it's like usually a person or a small team maintaining this thing on which you build your entire for-profit company um it sometimes they can't maintain it anymore and then a company comes and acqui hires them right um but we take a lot of open source for granted and i'm wondering maybe we we should start sponsoring people like sunil pai um and and others maybe we should start ping for open source because it is valuable and instead of being so entitled and the moment someone asks us for money be like oh my gosh no way never we think about am i getting value from this embedded tweet from this am i should i pay for it i mean look a lot of people don't want to put money in elon musk's pockets i understand but removing him and his character from the discussion if we get value are we willing to pay for it or are we just entitled should we just get this for free because it's our right i'm curious i don't know how do you how do you feel about that leave a comment so i feel like now the question is is it good or is it bad uh and you you know better right it's a spectrum it can be a, i feel like a lot of good can come from it in that we wake up and go like wait value sometimes you have to pay for um i feel like a lot of bad can come and and as a result of the good coming from it is open source uh being funded and and maintainers having flourishing careers and lives and all that um a lot of bad can come from it um because like you know it's 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 a, it, it's disrupting things it can literally break the web social logins just don't work anymore certain companies go out companies like what like hubspot um crms analytics tools that that depend on twitter would either go bankrupt maybe from the new bills uh maybe they change their business model it's disruptive and that's why there's potential for bad and good um but i think you know i don't have the context and this is something i want to talk about which i think is really really important um two things one the way in which it was done i think is i don't i don't think it's i i like it or respect it because it's literally like you have a week to get your stuff in order it's imposing a deadline on companies that on and people that didn't really see it coming in a way it's kind of like bullying uh saying yeah we you depend on us so get your you know ducks in order i don't like that bullying approach um but i don't have all the context i don't know what's happening inside twitter i don't know what's happening inside musk's head i don't know the matrix and this is the biggest point i want to make here is maybe we should see elon musk likes to talk about twitter is this public town square where all opinions and and you know he talks about you'll see on youtube i'll put some links up there he'll talk about like i want to open source the algorithm by which you know things happen what if we open sourced twitter's decision matrix this decision to make the api paid what if that whole process the decision making process was open source for everybody to look at and and decide on and and talk through that's kind of what musk wanted right um so i feel like that is something that i'd ask for and if you want to ask for to i don't know leave a comment go on twitter say something at me but i think that would fulfill musk's vision and that would also give us transparency to just how can you do something so bullish um like this that said i'm curious i'm interested i'm excited i'm hopeful to see what the future holds we've looked at plenty of ways this can go in but you know we can only look at the crystal ball so much until we actually are in the future and can see 
Um, but what I like to think of is, is I, I'm currently getting into like philosophy and stuff. Like there's, I heard of this thing called prescription theory, where when something comes your way, something unexpected, um, you see it as a prescription from a dog. Like, like I was, I'm reading a book called Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. And in the book, he talks about, you know, when you, when you get a prescription from a doctor, like, oh, I have knee pain. So the doctor prescribed, you know, this physical therapy or whatever. You get prescribed that for your good. Sometimes you get cough medicine that tastes nasty, but you get it prescribed for your good. So you have to take it. It's a prescription. Um, Aurelius was like, do life, like everything that comes your way, if you see it as a prescription, um, you'd have an easier time reasoning about these things. And so I'm wondering if we see this bait and switch of now pay for the Twitter API as some type of prescription for the world economy and for the way we think about pricing and money and abuse of APIs, what would that look like? I don't, I don't have the answer. I'm curious. I'm just being philosophical up in here. Um, leave me a comment. You probably have thoughts um, as I've had. Leave a comment or at me on Twitter. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.